Hey guys, Bowser the Character here. Today we're doing another lightning round of my thoughts on the Super Smash Bros. blog updates going all the way from August 29th up to October 4th. So we have over an entire month to cover. So let's get right into this. And if you don't know how this works by now, basically I go down every single character, stage, item, or whatever that we've had on the official Smash Bros. website from now. And I just give you my rapid fire thoughts on them with no to minimal editing. So let's get started with 829 Princess Toastu herself, Peach. Gonna be honest, never cared for Peach. Not in the Mario games, not in, Sm <laughs> Sorry, not in Smash Brothers. Uh, never been able to even really use her. Just one of those characters that play style never click with me. So it's nice she's back. Although, interestingly, I kind of want to try to main Daisy just because I prefer Daisy as a character to Peach. I don't know, I'm weird, don't ask. Yeah, moving on to the end of the month, 8.30 for our boy Wolf. He's finally back. I'm very, very glad that Wolf was back because Wolf has always been my favorite to use of the three Star Fox characters, at least from Brawl on. I don't know, there's something about his moveset always clicked with me better than Foxes or Falco, who I can all use, but Wolf has been my favorite. A lot of people were downright confused as to why Wolf wasn't in Smash 4's DLC when we got freaking Lucas. Roy and everyone else back, but he's finally back and he looks better than ever. I can't wait to see just how much different he is in his Brawl iteration. So that's one of the new, well not new, but returning characters I'm looking forward to um, coming back to the most. Uh, moving on to 9-2, my boy Ike. Ike has always been one of my top, top mains. Um, back when he first came out in Brawl, I had not played Fire Emblem Path of Radiance at that point, so I didn't really know who he was, but I liked his playstyle, and from then to this point, I've of course played Path of Radiance, and it's actually my favorite Fire Emblem um, game in the series, and I'm really hoping the Black Knight somehow gets into this game, you know, the chances are pretty null, but still holding out for that hope. Um, I looks as bare as, uh, uh, I can't freaking tell, I looks better than ever. Um, his neutral beast sends out a giant pillar of fire now when fully charged. I can't wait to experiment with that. Ike looks as good as ever. It's pretty cool that we get to use this Path of Radiance and Radiant Darn variants now. Although, I guess in a way that sort of comes with the drawback of him only having, um, really four alternate costumes to each version of him, which is kind of a bummer, but whatever. I actually prefer the, um, older Radiant Dawn version of Ike. And as far as I know, we still have not actually had Ike's, um... I think it's his Lord outfit from Path of Radiance, the one you get for the latter half of the game that's black. As far as I know, we don't have that outfit and we've never seen it in Smash, so that's still a bummer. I would love to see that, but yeah, I looks fun. Still one of my mains, definitely can't wait to use him and see what else has changed. Let's move on to September 3rd, King DDD himself. DDD has always been one of the heavy characters I can actually use. Sometimes heavy characters just don't uh, mesh well with me. But, I don't know, something about DDD always clicked with me, and at the time of Brawl, I really didn't know much about DDD. I, of course, knew he existed, but I never really met him in a Kirby game, because I've always been a casual Kirby player. But, using him in Smash, I guess, has given me a better appreciation for the giant, lovable penguin. So, yeah, awesome DDD's back. His model looks freaking awesome, like, the, um, the fur on his coat looks freaking insane, detail-wise. And... His new Final Smash, I actually prefer the old one, but with what they're going for in this game, with the new Final Smash just being quick, I can see why they changed it. And as far as I know, no, there's one more change to DDD. I think he can swallow his Waddledees now that you throw out and hit them back at people, which is something DDD could always do in the Kirby games, but has never been able to do in Smash. So that's a pretty cool change. And moving on to the fourth, Final Destination. The stage everybody loves. The most iconic stage in Smash, despite the fact it's a freaking flat platform. But of course, it looks cooler than ever before. One thing I hope doesn't come back is that, if you remember in Smash 4, Final Destination, periodically throughout the stage, there would be like this flash across the screen that would just blind everything on the map, and I freaking hated that. It's one of the reasons that's probably the, my most least played iteration of Final Destination. But this one, new, uh, this new one looks cool, and I'm pretty sure they're not going to bring that thing back. And also, something I'm wondering, is there a battlefield form of Final Destination? Because if so, I don't know, it's just kind of cool. But if there's not, eh, I feel like it's kind of lame. But I'm expecting there to be. But yeah. 
Moving on to the fifth, our Pokeball Pokemon, Alolan Exeggutor. This long neck mofo. He literally comes up on the stage and is just a giant divider. But, something cool and trollish that needs to happen at least once in my guess my uh, Smash Ultimate career is to throw a Pokeball and get Alolan Exeggutor on the very edge of the stage. So he's just guarding the edge of the stage and no one can get on. I want that to happen one time. I would be so satisfied if that happens. It would also be better if you can choose which Pokemon, I think I've talked about this before, which Pokemon can actually come out of Pokeball. So if you want to have like an all Alolan Exeggutor match, that would be freaking awesome. But if that doesn't happen, then I guess I can't really blame Sakurai because that can be a bit game breaking depending on what you get. Moving on to the ninth, we have Big Boy himself, Bowser, the iconic Mario villain. Bowser got a big update in Smash 4, but it doesn't seem like he's too changed in this one. Of course, he has his new Final Smash. And it, what was it? I think his up B now can kill you. Like before, Bowser's up B would just, you know, do multiple hits on you and you would just get sent a little over. But I think now it has killing power, which is a big change. And I forgot what, there's something else about Bowser I noticed that changed, like going through footage, but I can't remember what, nothing too major. But with Bowser as a character, I mean, he's, to me, he's always just been a generic Mario villain, I guess. He's not bad. I guess over the years, he inadvertently um, developed him as a good dad to Bowser Jr., which is a bit endearing. And I guess I now have to mention that Bowser has still taken over the internet, even though it's died down a bit with when this video is going live. But yeah, Bowser, cool villain. You degenerates kind of ruined him with Bowser. Yeah. Going on to the 10th, we have my favorite iteration of Link, actually, Toon Link. Uh, a lot of you that know me already know that Wind Waker to me is the closest game I've ever played to being a perfect game. And Toon Link is my favorite iteration of Link because despite the fact he is a mute character, he has a lot of personality and I like that. And I was actually really ecstatic when he was revealed for Brawl. Um, I did not honestly miss Young Link. I could never use Young Link for some reason in Melee. I could use uh, regular Link, but I couldn't use Young Link. And he, when he was replaced with Toon Link, I he uh, can't talk. His play style just instantly clicked with me, and I've used him as a main ever since. So hoping that trend continues into Smash Five. And yeah, it's pretty much it for Toon. Uh, 9/11, the summit from Ice Climbers, the stage. not even going to edit that out if you guys even heard that. But yeah, the Summit from Ice Climber is a stage. This is returning from Brawl. And this was actually one of my favorite series to play on at first in Brawl. For whatever reason, later on in my Brawl career, I just stopped playing on the stage and stopped caring for it. Not even sure why, but I like the stage. I like traveling stages. And this one is just a giant freaking iceberg that capsizes in the ocean and travels. And the fact that it's back is awesome. I probably would have been a bit disappointed if it wasn't back because I've had some good memories with this stage. So, welcome back, Sunday. Next up, on the 12th, we have Ryu, the king of fighting games himself. As we all know, Ryu has to change where one-on-one -on -one fights. He'll always face his opponent to reduce um, accidental button commands, which is awesome. Although, for someone like me that mainly plays four-player matches, that's probably not going to see much play, which sucks, because I like to use Ryu. Definitely not a um, main of Ryu, but I can sort of use him, and I like him. I actually uh, was a big Street Fighter 2 fan as a kid, but for some reason I just sort of fell out of love with traditional fighting games. But I've always liked Ryu, and so happy he's here in Smash. So, awesome. Next up, we have, on the 16th, our newest character, Isabel, who, if you saw my um, live reaction to that stream, the Nintendo Direct, I was surprised that, well, not that Isabel is in, but surprised that she is not in Echo Fighter. And since then, Sakurai has gone to explain why, and it makes a lot of sense. 
because her and Villager have different body types and some of Villager's movements wouldn't make too much sense with Isabel, which I can definitely understand. So, yeah, I get it. Uh, I'm not really like disappointed she's in this game. I'll be honest with you, I don't have too much interest in using her. But then again, I didn't have much interest in using a villager in Smash 4. And now he's one of my most fun characters to use her as a troll character. So who knows? Isabel could be like that for me. But we'll see. 917, the assist trophy, unfortunately for a lot of you, Shovel Knight. Now, I wasn't a big crusader of Shovel Knight being playable, but if he was, that would have been pretty cool. The little indie character that could, so to say. Um, but I am very okay with him being a cis trophy. It's better than him not being in the game at all. And what he does, as we've seen from the trailer, is he just digs up, well, people and dirt. Sometimes he'll get you food from underground, which is cool. And, um, I gotta note that Shovel Knight is one of the game, Shovel Knight the game, is one of the few 2D platformers that I actually can stomach. For some reason, I just can't get into a lot of platforming games, like any 2D Mario game, I just can't do it. But for some reason, Shovel Knight clicked with me, and I've always liked that. And I've always liked the design of the character, himself as a character, and the fact that an indie character like Shovel Knight is in Smash, even if he's not playable, is awesome. So let's move on to the 18th, Honest. The stage has been in like every Smash game since its inception in Melee. But that's okay, because I like on it. I like Earthbound, so the stage is a nice homage to that. Um, lots of good memories of this stage. Like I said, it's been in every freaking game, so uh, it's been in there throughout through a lot of my life. And not much to say, not much else to say about on it, honestly. I'm honestly looking more forward to using Magic Cant, because that was a great stage, and it's in freaking HD now. So yeah, uh, moving on to the 19th, Ganondorf. Ganondorf, for me, honestly, I am almost considering a brand new character. One is because he's finally done with his Twilight Princess look. He finally uses his swords in all of his smash attacks. And just that alone, for me, is probably going to make him feel like a brand new character. And I'm really looking forward to using him. Fun fact, I've never been able to use Captain Falcon, who, of course, Ganondorf was originally based on moveset-wise. But I've always liked using Ganondorf to at least some degree. So, the fact that he now has his sword, oh, I just want him, to, want him to be one of my top mains. So yeah, Ganondorf. Awesome. 920, Pikachu, my original main from Smash 64, and maybe the first character I'll use in this game. I haven't decided if I'm going to be using uh, Pikachu or Link first, but we'll see. But yeah, Pikachu has a lot of new changes. Like, he has an entirely new uh, neutral air. Um... I think his back air can actually kill you easier now, and a couple other things. But yeah, Pikachu looks better than ever. New outfit with Pikachu Libre. Um, despite the fact Pikachu was my original main, in subsequent games I haven't really been able to use it as good as I could in Smash 64. Like, I'm not terrible with Pikachu, but it's not to the point where I can really easily beat you with Pikachu in any game past Smash 64. So maybe this will be a return to form for me with Pikachu, discovering that uh, past love. We'll see. And on 923, we have the freaking moon from Twilight Princess as an assist trophy. Not much to say about the moon besides, you know, it comes, crashes. And as far as I can tell, there's no easy way to dodge this thing because it seems to hit the entire stage. At least like a flat stage, which is what we've seen it on. And also to note that the moon was Skull Kiss, um well, thing, you know, in Twilight Princess, and the fact that uh, if Skull Kid does get in as a character, what the heck would his um, Final Smash be? I would personally like to see him transform into one of the, you know, forms with the Majora's Mask. So that would be cool if that does happen. But yeah, Moon. It kills things. Yeah. Lucina, 924. Uh, Lucina, Lucina, Lucita. What to say about Lucina? She's literally future trunks with boobs. From Fire Emblem Awakening, if I'm being honest. She is. But she's not a bad character. A bit too uh, serious for my taste, character-wise. 
But in Smash, she's cool. I like the fact that her alternates actually have different hair colors and really represent the other girls from Fire Emblem Awakening. Um, but as a clone, I guess I don't care for her because Mars Moveset himself is kind of just plain. So getting another Marth without the tipper is just sort of bland. But Lucina, she's here. Cool, whatever. 925, Brinstar from Smash 64. Not my least favorite stage, but one of the stages I definitely cared about the least. That's honestly, that's all I can say about that. So, moving on. 926 Death Scythe from Castlevania. If you play Castlevania or know anything about the series, Death is always like the side hoe of Dracula. Not his right hand man. This dude is like always kissing up to Dracula. Almost like every freaking game. So, the fact that Death is here in some representation is actually pretty cool. Because he is iconic to the Castlevania series and the fact that one, he's a stage hazard himself. And two, you can use his freaking scythe as a weapon, which kills you, I think, at over 100% automatically if it touches you. It's pretty cool. And I can't wait to have someone like Isabel just hold this thing and take screenshots with it. So, moving on to 927, one of my favorite Pokemon, Lucario. Huh, <sighs> Lucario. I was very excited when Lucario was first revealed for, um... <clears throat> Sorry, Smash um, Brawl. I remember that day actually. I was in a uh, science class in high school. I think that was my junior year, and it was the game was just released in Japanese, and we didn't know the full roster at that point. We only had like rumors. And Lucario was actually sort of leaked before that with an icon that was like a really minuscule icon, as like a stock photo, and a picture, which they then removed, which is kind of like confirming it. But then we saw screenshots of him in Subspace Emissary, and my height went through the roof. And I can't actually use Lucario to his like full potential, but I like using him. He's one of those characters where you're not fully good with them, but you can use them to the point where you're still having fun. He's one of those characters for me. And as you know, I like using characters just because I like them as a character. And like I say, he's one of my favorite Pokemon since he was revealed for Gen 4. So, awesome to see Lucario here. Although I'm kind of going to miss his um, Mega Lucario Final Smash. Didn't really care for the giant death laser, but whatever. 930, Cap'n. The new assist trophy from Animal Crossing since Isabel is here now. Cap'n is kind of funny to me because he literally, <laughs> he literally takes you to school. <laughs> he literally takes your ass to school in the bus. You know he rides up on you through the stage and you automatically get in the back seat of the bus and the, your character is panicking and he just dries off the freaking edge. I freaking love it. Freaking love it. Like can you imagine Ridley <laughs> in the back of the bus like just getting driven off the freaking edge. Ah, it's the beauty of Smash. Just little interactions like that. And then moving on to the present month of October. The first of the month we have Sheik. Uh, a couple things about Sheik. One, when I first saw Sheik in this game, I didn't notice that she's actually sporting the um, Sheikah outfit from Breath of the Wild. So, yeah, this is technically, I guess, Breath of the Wild Zelda or Ocarina Zelda with the Breath of the Wild Sheikah outfit. I don't know, it's weird. But also, the Smash site um, refers to Sheik for the first time as a male. Now, this is a, like an internal debate between people. Is Sheik a male? Is Sheik a female? Of course, she's masquerading as a dude, but Sheik to me has always looked female, so I refer to Sheik as a girl. And I could only use Sheik in Melee. And a good part of that is that in every game after Melee, her side air, which is like mm, the coup de gras to her moveset, is just crap. In Melee, if you get hit with that side air, you are going to get flung off the freaking stage. But in Brawl and Smash 4, it does crap. Now, Smash 4 gave Sheik some new stuff that I like, you know, the bouncing fish and the rolling grenade or whatever, which are pretty fun, pretty cool, and I like. But that Sheik has never been the same for me after Melee. And I hope I can use her again, because I like Sheik as a character. And now, moving on to the second of the month, my favorite stage from Smash 64, because I am a big Pokemon fan, Saffron City. Saffron City is back in Smash. I've wanted this since it got cut post-64. 
Oh, yes, I can't wait to play on the stage a million more times. I love playing the stage as a kid. And the fact that it's back. And the fact that the Pokemon still look like they're, uh, I can't even call it 64 bits because they look so terrible, but I love it when they pop out the door. And I love the fact that they still look that way. They're not HDified. Yes, I, I'm using that as a term, HDified. And I can't wait to play again on Saffron City. Eight players on Saffron City is just going to be so hectic and fun. Oh, I need this game. Yeah, sorry. Just had to gush for a second there. Moving to the third. Fox. Like everyone else and their mom, I use Fox and Melee as my main just because he clicked with me. But in every game past that, I have not been able to use Fox as well as I could. Uh, I think it was Brawl. I could use Fox after a while, like when Brawl first came out, we all took a little bit to get adjusted to the new speed. And Fox is one of those characters that got hit the most with that, like he just did not click with me at all after coming to Brawl. But I learned to use him after I got used to the speed of the game. <clears throat> and I cannot use Fox in Smash 4 at all. Um, honestly, I kind of don't even care about Fox anymore. I like using Wolf, as I said before, and I like using Falco now. So Fox to me is just like plain bread when Wolf and Falco are like the season full of vitamins and toasted bread. That's a terrible metaphor, but that's what came to mind, so screw it. Moving on, final entry, October 4th. The new assist, well not assist trophy, the new Pokeball Pokemon, Mimikyu. One of my favorite Pokemon from Gen 7. A lot of people wanted Mimikyu playable, and that would have been awesome, but I'm fine with it being a Pokeball Pokemon too. And of course, it uses this uh, move, I think it's called Play All Day, something like that, where it snatches you with its uh, claw, and it unfortunately makes you see what's under the cloak. And if you don't know about Mimikyu, its appearance is said to be so horrible or terrifying that if you see it, you just die. So, it sucks you under the cloak, and does something to you and you die so yeah Mimikyu cuddly cuddly Mimikyu and that will do it for this lightning round of smash updates uh let's see it's the fourth the game comes out yeah there'll probably be two more of these like one a month for um the rest of October and then one for November until release I'm not sure if Sawgrass gonna be doing this even after release cuz I think um I think it was the Brawl Dojo that kept updating even after the game was out. Or Smash 4, I can't remember. One of those. So he might be doing these after the game's release. But after the game's release, I'm pretty much done. I'm just going to be playing the game. I don't care about the updates anymore. Just to be honest with you. So give me your thoughts on anything I said in this video down in the comment section below. Thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, have a great day. Congrats on making it all the way to the end of the video. I hope you had as much fun watching as I did making it. If you want to see more of me, think about either subscribing or checking out more of my videos. If you want to make sure you never miss an upload, click the bell icon, join the notification squad. That way you'll always be notified whenever I upload something. A big thanks to all my patrons on Patreon, the Rookie Tears and Up, West Town HD, Nightmare Alpha, Raheem and Amber. Thank you guys so much for your continued support. Your support helps keep this channel alive and you have my eternal gratitude.